welcome to Sam Livecast. I'm Sam, and we're trying something a little different today. You're watching this while I'm out of town, and we couldn't do the live livecast, so we're doing a pre-recorded livecast, which should still be lots of fun, I'm hoping. More food-centric, less conversation, but more about the food, and I think that's a good thing. So here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to do... Um, wait, wait, wait. Are you saying you don't want to hear me speak? No, I didn't say that. I, I said... Um, you just want me to shut up, don't you? No, that is not true at all. I want to hear you speak. I'm just saying there's more food and less chatter at the beginning. Well, for those of you who don't realize, this is me, Max, behind the camera. And uh, we're doing this a little different today, but here we go. I just said that. <laughs> so here's the deal. Mashed potatoes three different ways. And my starting point for this is generally my starting point always for mashed potatoes. Water. No. Boiling water? No. What? Guess again. Not, not a potato. <laughs> no. Well, packaged mashed potatoes. There you go, yes. And look, and before you, you know, jump out of your chair and say, what the fuck, Sam, are you doing with packaged mashed potatoes? I'm saying by the time I do what I'm going to do to these three different types, you'll be saying to yourself, do I need to make mashed potatoes from scratch? And I'm not discouraging that. If you want to do that, if that's your thing, then let that continue to be your thing. That's just not our style. Well, it's certainly not my style. <laughs> I even think sometimes if my grandmother, who hasn't been alive for a long time, came back, if I was going to make her dinner, roast chicken, mashed potatoes or something, would I make my own mashed potatoes then? Wow, oh, I really like that question, actually. If yeah. your dead grandmother was going to come back to life, what would you make her for dinner? Did you have to say dead? No, I know. I should no. probably shouldn't have. If my grandmother came back to life, what would I make? Uh -huh. uh, she was a meat and potatoes woman. She was a great cook, but I don't... Can I just say that this actually looks kind of gross? At this point, check this out. See, there's this little bit of like pea liquid in the bottom of that mm -hmm. thing. That's not very nice. But that's okay. We're going to get beyond this. By the way, in, the, um, in the, uh, the school of what's gross before you cook it, you ever seen like chicken, beef, liver, the worst. stuff like that? It's all ugly before it's cooked. So the idea that this is, ugh. <laughs> See, if you just think that this is what you're going to be serving somebody, it's, it's, you're never going to get to this point. But you will once the whole thing's finished. All right, so that goes on the heat. That goes on the heat. We'll start warming that up. Okay. Um, there's three different uh, bases for what we're doing here today. And the first one will be uh, some red onion. Yes. So. So red because it's sweet and you want that flavor? Red because it's sweet. We're going to caramelize this a bit. It's going to be super delicious. And you'll see what we'll add with this. Get rid of that. Okay. So red onion and... In the interest of speeding this up, let me start a pan heating. So we're just going to take this half of a red onion, cut thin, and throw this in the pan. I really admire your cutting skills. Yeah, I know. I know there's a lot of chefs out there that do not admire. That do not admire my cutting <laughs> skills, but it is what it is. I'm okay with it. It works for me, and I don't cut myself all that much anymore. Though I did cut myself. <laughs> I was just going to say. My finger really badly that required four stitches. But you four. weren't chopping. You were I was, I was trying to wrap a knife. Which if is anybody a, doesn't know what we're talking about, all you need to do is go to thesamlivecast.com and you can head through <laughs> the archives and you'll see all the madness. <laughs> right. Four or stitches. To, or go to Facebook and see the picture that I posted with the doctor, oh, with the blood man. and the doctor stitching and ugh. Yeah, that was brutal. It was pretty gross. And right. we're really obviously going to be very interested in getting your guys' input on uh, this, you know, kind of format of the show. So you can go to facebook.com slash Sam the Cooking Guy and let us know what you guys are thinking. Right. Okay. So here's what we've got. We've got, we've got some red onion here, thinly sliced. Put a little olive oil in. And just let it, let it do its thing right there, right? That's pretty. The mashed potatoes are starting to heat and bubble down here in the bottom, actually, if you take a look. Mm -hmm. You'll see what's going on down here. Oh, yeah, very nice. Right? So these are going to need to be mixed. Look at, they look super dry and, and gross. And honestly, I've said it, I, I would never serve mashed potatoes 
pre-packaged, pre-made like this, just like this. There's always a few things that I would do to them, and we're gonna make some great changes today. You're gonna like this. Oh yeah. I need a bigger spoon. Mashed potatoes are actually really cheap too. They're pretty cheap, yeah. You can get those a are... thing for dinner for like a dollar. We used to get those all the time when we were in college. Uh, you know what? I shot a, um, a show way back in my very early cooking guy days that was, um, I did something with mashed potatoes and I used package, the, like the powdered mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. which are actually potatoes that are dried, but. Okay, and this is different because this was actual potatoes in a thing. Yeah, but by the time I finished with that package of dried mashed potatoes turning into whatever I did, the girl, Suzanne, that was shooting the show was like completely freaked out over how good it was. Oh yeah. Okay, so you see, they're starting to warm, but they still look like, it's like silly putty. It needs, it needs something. So the bare minimum that we're gonna give this is a little olive oil, squeeze in here, just to help richen them up a little bit, and a little salt, and a little pepper. So that would be my base mashed potato uh, combination if I was making it uh, just to go on the side of a plate with nothing in it, right? Just straight mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. If I was doing a uh, 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 meatloaf thing, yes, that'd be great. In fact, go to the, go to the website, cookingguy.com. There's a Mexican meatloaf there that's really, really delicious. We haven't done that on the live cast yet, I don't think. Uh, we haven't? Yeah, All right, maybe if, we should do we that. If we haven't, we need to. Okay, onions here, look. Starting to get a little color on them, soften, caramelize a little bit. Beautiful. And that just means that the natural sugars are starting to come out, all right? So this is good, this is good, this is good. Let me figure out, just look at my list and see what else I have to do. So red Let's onion, take a look at your sugar. list. Yeah, so we're shooting three shows today to cover this week, and one will be the mashed potatoes, and one will be a spaghetti thing, and not that anybody can read any of that. You know, I was just gonna say, your writing is <laughs> terrible. And one will be a pepperoni thing. So you can see, look, now the color's really nice, right? The color's nice. The only thing is olive oil in here. You know what I could do? Hmm. Uh, I'll add a little bit of butter, just to richen them up a bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't freak out. Hey, I'm not freaking out. I'm no, I know, it. I know <laughs> you're not, but I don't want people to go, ah, mashed potatoes, butter, blah, blah, blah. The whole thing's gonna be like really bad for Everything us. Okay. in moderation. Everything in moderation. All right, so that's doing that thing right there nicely. I'm gonna add uh, one, one, one little bit of uh, brown sugar to the top of this, mm. right here. We're gonna add a little extra sweet, right? Just that. There's maybe a, maybe a tablespoon of brown sugar, that half half of an onion. I mean, look, we're not making a ton of this, but but. Wow, that smell. Okay, just wait, wait till you see the finish of this, okay? So there's that. Okay, now the potatoes are here, and I've been stirring them well because I want them to be fairly creamy like this. They look very, really mushy and creamy now. Yeah. Mushy? Yeah. I don't know if mushy's <laughs> right. Okay, so that's good. That's good, that's good. Um, let me think. Brown sugar. Let me look at my last brown sugar, blue cheese, and chipotle cheese. Okay, all right, back up and go over here. Let me just get two things ready. Okay, one is I need a little parsley here. I need some uh, Monterey Jack cheese. I need a little blue cheese. Wait, sorry, sorry, I need some Chipotle. And uh, Horseradish, prepared horseradish, the um, the not creamed kind, right? I keep that, that's nice. You know, if you're gonna make a roast beef sandwich or something, it's nice to just, of course. It's nice to grab this, this is horseradish cream. Really good in a roast beef sandwich, that kind of thing, side of a steak or something. But for this, I'm using this prepared horseradish, which is a little, it's a little grainier, but it really delicious. Okay, that can go off. Um, You've always been a huge horseradish guy, I can, as I can yes. recall. It's because I'm Jewish and <laughs> it's the 
the hot item of our people. What, you what happened? For? I used to have four of these, and now I, I can't. <laughs> I don't know where they are. And I'd like to be able to stir so you can see what's going on. Wait. Wait for it. My apologies. Part of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's not going to work. What I'll you use these. To... You're looking for four bowls? I wanted, I wanted for, for three of these clear bowls oh. to mix in. But I don't have them. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, let me just get all my ingredients ready, and then we're going to be fine. Okay. All right. So parsley, just this Italian parsley will be going in one. And of course, I could have had all these things ready in advance. I could have had all these things ready in advance, but I'm trying to still do this so you can see in generally real time how the whole thing goes down. Which Parsley. is so rare in cooking, which is why we want it's to bring it to rare. you guys. Very rare. She's so chipotle, you know, right? Chipotle are large smoked jalapenos that come like this. They come in a can. It sort of looks like livers, but <laughs> they don't look like livers. They come like that, and that's the brand that I buy that I like. So watch what we're gonna do. So I gotta try and do this fairly quickly before everything cools down. So some mashed potatoes in each of these bowls. Max, you're gonna like this a lot. I don't yeah, think I'm so excited. You've had this, like this way. Okay, watch. One, two, three spoons, okay? So in one, we're gonna put some horseradish, like a decent amount. This is maybe almost a tablespoon in here and um, the parsley. Mm. And we give it a little bit more olive oil. And this one gets mixed. Wow. I can just smell that fresh parsley. You know what? Yeah, and you can also smell when the, horse, when the horseradish heats up. Yeah. It really takes on some like, really delicious flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, uh, right here, a little bit of blue cheese crumble. And this mashed, right? Mm. Mix it up. Blue cheese here. Oh, if you brought three types of mashed potatoes to a party, <laughs> you'd be the king of the world. Wouldn't I? And this one gets this, sorry. It's okay. So not the, not the, the whole smoked jalapeno in here. We're just going to use some of this sauce. And it's called adobo sauce. Not to be confused with the Filipino adobo, which is soy-based, right? Just so you know, people, be careful. This stuff is very, very strong. Right, and we're gonna add a little uh, shredded Monterey Jack here. Ooh. Okay. These are noisy bowls. All right, and then we can do this. We can take a plate. And here's how we would serve these. Here's how I would serve them. We do these guys right here, right? So there's the chipotle mashed with a little bit of extra um, Monterey Jack on top. Mm -hmm. Here's the blue cheese. Um, wait, what is this one? Blue cheese horseradish. Yes. Is that right? No, no, no. Horseradish salon, horseradish parsley, and then just blue cheese. Is that just blue cheese in this one? I think so. Why well, can't I remember? Oh yes, watch. This is blue cheese. Hold on. We'll do blue cheese on this end. Watch. Okay. Okay, that's just blue cheese there. Wait, wait for it. And this is horseradish parsley, correct? Yes. Okay, horseradish parsley. Uh, oh, and now this. And now on top of the, um, what is that? Oh my God, Wait, horseradish what parsley. What oh, do you I have to look at my list. Oh no, that's horseradish. blue cheese. That's the blue cheese, right? You put them and out the, of order. And the blue cheese goes right here. The blue cheese potatoes, get that. 
Get the, wow. get the caramelized red onion on top. Okay, let me see if I can do this once more. Uh, chipotle mashed, right? The yes. adobo sauce in there, Monterey Jack cheese mixed in a little bit on top. This one is the um, horseradish, olive oil, and parsley. And we'll give it a little bit more olive oil over the top. And this one is mashed with blue cheese and caramelized red onions on top. Now you're talking. And the last thing that I add almost always is a little bit of fresh ground pepper. And now we can taste them. Oh my God, that was a lot of work. Oh. Amazing. You know, it's not just the spice or heat, it's the smokiness in that that to me is super amazing. Horseradish, parsley, olive oil. And this bad boy with the caramelized red onion. I'm king of the mashed potato world! All right, we're done. Different kind of live cast, no less fun, great freaking food. This is all amazing. Um, stay tuned to tomorrow or Wednesday, whatever day it is. I don't know what day it is. Today's, I don't know. However it works out, it works out. I want you to make this stuff. Let us know. Email us info at thelivecast.com. Leave a comment on iTunes or on YouTube, wherever you watch this. Thanks for hanging out with us. Tell your friends and... Go to fixtureslivinging.com to check them out. Sponsor the show. You saw their name up at the top. We love them. Fixtures Living on the Facebook, Kitchen Bath, Outdoor, everything. They're amazing. You will love them and they will love you and they'll treat you like somebody that should be treated properly. Make all this. See you next time. Thanks for hanging out.